Hello and welcome to our newscast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Hong Jie, live from Seoul. We start off uh, with an anti-graft law that takes effect today. The law is aimed at clamping down on corruption in Korean society and opening up a new era of zero tolerance to irregularities among public officials. Park jong has this report. The new law is the government's most extensive anti-corruption measure yet. Known widely as the Kim Young lan Law, named after a former Supreme Court justice who proposed the regulation, it will affect officials in government as well as those in the education, media, and a wide range of sectors. Under the law, at least 4 million people working in those fields are banned from accepting meals costing more than 27 U.S. dollars, gifts exceeding 45, and congratulatory or condolence money over 90 dollars. When their job calls for having meals with people, they'll be required to go Dutch and decline offering favors in exchange for cash or other benefits. Those who receive money or gifts exceeding 1 million won or roughly $910 at a time and 3 million won or slightly over $2,700 in a year from anyone related to their work will be charged with violating the law. The government hopes the anti-corruption law will bring more transparency and eradicate corrupt behavior in the country. Advocates of the law say the transparency will improve Korea's competitiveness in the global arena. But critics say implementing the new law may be easier said than done. They claim the law will have an impact on domestic consumption, especially in the entertainment, food and retail sectors. Park Jung-hong, Arirang News. A senior U.S. official says Washington plans to deploy the THAAD missile defense system to South Korea as soon as possible. Speaking at a congressional hearing on Tuesday, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for East Asia Daniel Russell said it was crucial to upgrade defense systems given the pace of North Korea's missile tests. On a related note, U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter has warned North Korea that any use of nuclear weapons will be met with an overwhelming and effective response. Carter made the remark during a visit this week to an Air Force base in North Dakota, which maintains an arsenal of nuclear missiles. His comments are seen as a reaffirmation of Washington's nuclear umbrella commitment to South Korea. The South Korean Navy has recovered the bodies of three crew members who were aboard a helicopter that crashed into the EC on Monday night. Officials say a remotely operated underwater vehicle found the bodies of the main pilot, secondary pilot and a naval non-commissioned officer some 60 kilometers off South Korea's east coast along with more wreckage from the Lynx anti-submarine helicopter. The men were in their late 20s to early 30s. The helicopter, which was first deployed by the South Korean Navy in 1999, sent out a distress signal and vanished from radar slightly after 9 p.m. local time on Monday. It was taking part in a joint military exercise between the South Korean and U.S. navies. An investigation into the cause of the crash is still ongoing. Lawmakers from the ruling Senori Party continued their boycott of the parliamentary audit for a second day on Tuesday. They're demanding the National Assembly Speaker step down as tensions rise over a motion to dismiss President Park's choice for Agriculture Minister. Tim young has the details. The ruling Senori Party has submitted a formal parliamentary resolution calling for the resignation of Assembly Speaker Chong se -gyun. The Senuri chief on Tuesday lambasted Chong for the controversial remarks he made during a parliamentary session last week about sacking the newly appointed agriculture minister. He also cast doubt on Chong's ability to remain neutral in his post. This person, Chong se -gyun, has no intention of keeping his political neutrality as an assembly speaker. The recording has revealed his thinking. The ruling party chief is referring to an audio recording of a conversation between Chong and a main opposition party lawmaker that was leaked Monday. In the recording, Chong is heard suggesting the ruling party offer a compromise on other controversial bills in exchange for the withdrawal of an opposition-led motion to dismiss the agriculture minister. 
The political tussle had escalated over the weekend after President Park Geun-hye vetoed the dismissal motion. The main opposition Minji Party of Korea urged the Senuri chief to end a hunger strike he started Monday and come back to the negotiating table. Party leaders usually start a dialogue to overcome gridlock, but all the channels for talks have been cut off as the ruling party chief is staging a hunger strike. We urge Chief Lee Jong-hyun to end his hunger strike and work with the opposition to resolve the confrontation. The minor opposition People's Party echoed the view, adding that a hunger strike is not the right way for a ruling party leader to protest. The rival parties aren't likely to change their positions on the dismissal motion for the agriculture minister anytime soon, meaning the audit deadlock is expected to continue for some time. Jim young Arirang News. President of the World Bank, Tim Yong Kim, has unanimously been reappointed to a second five-year term. In a statement released on Tuesday, the World Bank said Kim, who is a Korean-American, was chosen by the bank's executive directors for a term that starts July 1, 2017. Kim ran unopposed as the nomination period to lead up to the multilateral development lender closed without any challengers coming forward. Kim has led the World Bank since April 2012. And that brings us to the end of our newscast. Do stay tuned for more updates coming up at 10 a.m. Korea time. Goodbye for now.